here's another example of how to work with Newton's second law. And here's a slightly different type of problem that you might be used to. Uh, let's read it to get familiar with the problem. It says here that a block of 2 kilograms is being held against a vertical wall by a 3 Newton force directed at an angle of 15 degrees above the horizontal. What coefficient of friction is required to keep the block from sliding? All right, if we draw a picture of this, we probably have a better idea of what's going on. So here's a vertical wall. Here's a block. The block has a mass equal to about 2 kilograms. And there's a force keeping the block against the wall. And the force makes an angle of 15 degrees above the horizontal. So let's say that here's a horizontal. Here's the force. And maybe to, to get a better picture, a better feel of exactly what's going on here, let me apply the force maybe here, towards the middle of the block. All right, there's the force. And that force has a magnitude of 3 Newtons. And uh, the angle here, theta, is equal to 15 degrees. And the question now becomes, what is the coefficient of friction to keep the block, the block from sliding? So you say, well, why does it need friction in the first place? Well, the block is being held against the wall simply by this force. You can see that the weight of the block will cause the block to slide this way, and a component of the force, which is vertical this way, will try to push the block up, and if the weight is greater than the vertical force of the force, then the block will slide down. If the vertical force of the force is greater, the block will go up. But... Um, I think in this case, the block is big enough so that eventually the block will slide down anyway. And with some friction between the wall and the block, it will prevent it from sliding. You just have to figure out how big that has to be. To get a better feel for it, let's draw the forces on there. So we have the weight pulling down on the block. So this is mg. And then here's the force pushing against the block this way, which means there's a vertical component and a horizontal component. So the vertical component pushes the block against the wall, the horizontal component and the vertical component pushes the block upward. So since this is the same as the force on this side right here, that would be opposite to the angle. If this angle is 15 degrees and this angle is 15 degrees as well. So this becomes the, oppo the opposite component to the force. So this is F times the sine of theta. And here the horizontal component is adjacent to the angle, so this is F times the cosine of theta. Right? So now you can see, looking at this diagram, that if mg is bigger than F sine theta, the block will slide down. If F sine theta is bigger than mg, the block will slide up. I think we can see that if this is 2 kilograms and g is... Uh, 9.8 meters per second squared, that mg will indeed be bigger than f sine theta, so the expectation is that the block will slide down. But since there's friction between the block and the wall, there will be a friction force, and the friction force, by definition, is equal to the normal force times mu. Now, what is the normal force in this case? Well, since the force here has a component pushing the block into the wall, we would expect, and let me grab a different color, we would expect a normal force to be pushing back from the wall against the block, normal force, which would be equal to this force right here, so that would be equal to F cosine theta. And then the friction force will be equal to that normal force times mu, so that would be equal to F cosine theta times mu. And what about the direction of the friction force? Well, Without the friction force, we would assume that the block will slide down. So the friction force will oppose that motion, and so we can then assume that the friction force will be in this direction, force friction, and as we found it to be, it's equal to F cosine theta times mu. All right, now we have three forces on the block in the vertical direction. We have the weight of the block pulling it down, we have the component of the force pushing up, and then we have the friction force also pushing up, which is caused by the normal force, which is then in turn caused by the F cosine theta, the horizontal component of the force. All right, so now if the block is not going to slide down, that means that this force plus this force is equal to this force. So we need to find the minimum size of this force to make up for the difference between these two. All right, 
we could then say that the sum of all the forces in the y direction should add up to zero. Now, why do we say that? Well, if the block is not going to slide down, it's not going to accelerate, because according to Newton's second law, we know that F equals ma. And if A is zero, then F must be zero. In other words, there's then no net force. And if there's no net force, that means all the forces must therefore add up to zero. And of course, we're talking about all the forces in the y direction. All right, so let's add them all up. We have a positive force, force friction, plus the positive force, F sine theta. And then we add to that the negative force, or in, in that way, subtract the negative force, Mg. And when we add all those up, that should therefore add up to zero. Okay, let's write what those things are. So the friction force here is F times the cosine of theta times mu plus f times the sine of theta minus mg, and that equals zero. Now, since we're looking for the coefficient of friction, we're looking for this variable right here. We're going to solve this equation from mu, and then we'll have the answer for the problem. This means that we're going to move these two to the other side of the equation. So now we have f cosine of theta times mu is equal to, when we bring the minus mg across, that becomes plus mg, and we bring the f sine theta across, that becomes minus f sine theta. Now we can divide both sides of the equation by the coefficient of mu, so divide the left side by f cosine theta, we divide the right side of the equation by f cosine theta, these cancel out, and now we have the equation solved for mu, then all I have to do is plug in what those values are, so mu is equal to the mass, the mass was 2 kilograms, times g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, minus f, f is 3 newtons, and we have the sine of theta, now theta was 15 degrees, so we want the sine of 15 degrees. And the whole thing is divided by the force, again, 3 newtons, this time times the cosine of theta or the cosine of 15 degrees. Now we go ahead and work that out in our calculator. Now, unit-wise, take a look. We have kilograms, meters per second squared in this term. Now, the units for kilogram meters per second, per second squared is newtons. We have newtons here and we have newtons there. So the units cancel out, which means that mu is actually a a unitless amount, which is what we expect. So now grab the calculator. We have uh, 2 times 9.8, that's 19.6, minus the quantity, 3 times the sine of 15. Okay, now we divide that by 3 and divide it by the cosine of 15. And so we end up with mu equals, hmm, that doesn't look right. Let me try that one more time. So we have 2 times, well, maybe I did get it right. I got an interesting answer, so I just want to make sure I got this right. So 2 times 9.8, that's 19.6, minus 3 times sine of 15. So that's um, 3 times 15, take the sine of that, equals and then divide that by 3, and then we divide it by 15, take the cosine of that, equals, and the answer, I get the same answer, so uh, I get mu is equal to 6.5. Well, that doesn't look good, uh, because mu can only be between 0 and 1. So what does that mean? That means that my force is not sufficiently great or sufficiently large that no matter how big the friction is, I can't keep the block from sliding. So the only good answer I could have gotten would be some answer between 0 and 1. So in this case, the block cannot be held from sliding down with a force, no matter how great the friction is, and the block will continue to slide due to the weight. 
Now, if I had applied a greater force to it, if I now, for example, say instead of 3 newtons, I apply a force of 30 newtons, I may get a different answer. So, why don't we give that a try? So, if the force in, instead had been a 30 newton force, so now I go over here, so in this, instead of that, I would have this as a 30 newton force, and this as a 30 newton force, let's see what I would get in this case. Could I have a friction force large enough to keep the rock from sliding? Let's take a look. So again, we have 19.6 minus the quantity 30 times the sine of 15. Okay, and divide that by 30. And then divide it by uh, 15, the cosine of 15. And there we go, something that looks a little bit more plausible. So in this case, if I apply the large enough force of 30 newtons, mu would now be equal to 0.41, which is a quantity between 0 and 1, which is a plausible answer. So mu typically is between 0 and 1. So if the coefficient of friction was 0.41 or greater, the block would, in this case, not slide down. I do need a force greater than 3 newtons in this case to make that happen. All right, I think this will definitely illustrate another way of looking at Newton's second law and how to apply it. In this case, we don't have an acceleration, so therefore there's no net force, which means that the sum of the forces in the direction where we expect an acceleration must add up to zero. All right.